how to land your first government contract. Government contracts have been available for years, so many years. We've heard about them. They're always in the news. Companies from Amazon to the neighbor down the street that you didn't even know sold to the government, sells to the government. The question still remains, how do you land your first one? So I'm here to help you all with that. If you notice me looking down, it is not because I'm reading from a script. It is not because I am being rude. And it's not because I'm like playing a game or anything. It is because I am taking a look to see. Um, I'm taking a look to see. Um, taking a to see what kind of comments I may have. So, how to land your first one. Before you can even get any type of contract, let's take a look at what does it mean to have a federal government contract? What does it mean? So, um, just again, looking to see if there's any comments here. So I didn't want to use like a stream yard or anything. So, okay, great. I think that'll be a little easier. So what does it mean? The federal government spends billions of dollars every year buying products and services from people like you and like me. I have three government contracting companies and I'm waiting for my fourth one to get a cage code. So I totally understand what many of you are going through. So knowing this brings us to the ultimate question. So what to sell? What do you sell? What do you sell? What do you sell? <laughs> that will get us to our first contract. So I have a video where I interview Kimberly Kidd. She's awesome. She's, in, she's been in the space for a couple of years and has won, I believe, almost $2 million in contracts. She started out in IT, like a corporate environment, right? Corporate environment, IT. And she decided she was done with it. She wanted to go off on her own, start her own company. However, comma, she knew IT was not the place for her to begin. It was going to take way too long. It would have taken potentially certain set-asides. It was not at all the route she wanted to take. I'll make sure I put the link below so you can take a look at that video. So what she did was what many people do, and that is go the path of least resistance pertaining to something that's low risk. But before we get there, before Kimberly Kidd had $2 million in contracts, you have to make sure to be a prime contractor, you are registered in SAM.gov and you have a cage code. You must have these things. More and more solicitations are stating if you are not active in SAM, you cannot win an award. So the last thing you want is to put in all this time and energy into a proposal and you find out, oh, I can't do it. <laughs> You don't want that. So you need to make sure that you must do that. The next thing that you must do is ponder, do you want to be a subcontractor? Meaning somebody else does all the hard work. They find the client, they're involved in the sales, the marketing, and they have an opportunity for you. When I first started out, um, some of my non-government work was for a major um, 
organization. They were a small business, but they really dominated the field that they were in. And it was awesome because I didn't have to exude all of that energy and figure out how to get into the door. They did all of that and they just brought it to me. So I was able to get paid for my expertise and I had my business set up. So it was perfect. So if you're interested in being paid as an expert, there are plenty of opportunities out there for you to be a 1099, a gig person. There's tons of those. So when it comes to getting that first, remember, getting that first government contract, it is based on which route do you want to take? Do you want to be the prime contractor, like you're the holder of the contract, or do you want to be a subcontractor where somebody's bringing the work to you? If your objective is to be a subcontractor, it's pretty easy. It just boils down to, y'all ready for this? Y'all ready? Networking. That's all it boils down to. Networking and identifying a potential burning need for what you offer. For instance, there's a woman who I coach. Her background is IT. She excels at IT project management. So for several years, she's been a 1099, a subcontractor, an independent contractor for different companies working on different government contracts. Because of her expertise and because of her networking. So to accomplish this, you go to LinkedIn, you make it known, you let everyone know on LinkedIn, hey, I'm really interested in 1099 opportunities. You search in LinkedIn for those who are connected to the kind of companies that you would love to provide these services to. Oh, thank you so much, Hedrick. I was, I was checking out the comments. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, okay, great. This is on here when I did that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. So leverage LinkedIn. It is one of like two platforms where you can quickly organically grow. Leverage it. Leverage it. Leverage it. Dust off your profile. Connect with people who are in the area or connected to the companies you would like to 1099 for and let the world know, hey, I'm seeking a 1099 gig opportunity. I would go so far to put it on all my social media. I'd put it on Instagram, Facebook. Hello, BJ. I'd put it on TikTok. I would put it everywhere. Why? Because we remember that. It's like an ad. We, there's McDonald's ads all over the place. There's Coca-Cola ads all over the place because they never want us to stop buying their stuff. So the same applies to you. If you want to land your first government contract as a subcontractor, this is it. It's reaching out to business owners like myself to see if we're looking for something that you offer. The other approach, this one, it's, hey, you never know. And that is you can chat with an existing employer. Sometimes if you let them know that you want to go out on your own as a 1099, sometimes they'll say, okay, well, great. We'll just take your position and convert it over. Sometimes they want to do that. Sometimes they don't. The other thing that you can also try for some job openings, contact that company to see if they're interested in turning that into a 1099 role. You never know. There are several positions within organizations like recruiting, for instance, that's outsourced 1099. But the person talking to you on your phone, you may not realize that your recruiter is a 1099 working for that company. It's one of the fastest way. Now, going back to Miss Kimberly Kidd, what she ended up doing was getting into HVAC. So for all of you out there 
who maybe you're like, listen, I got it, but I want to go this more entrepreneurial route. I want to be a prime contractor. So you go where they are spending, where it's easy to win. So what kind of business name is useful so, when, um, so that can be more useful to more than janitorial? Here's what's beautiful. You can create endless doing business names and DBA, doing business as. So even if your current company, let's say it's Jones Janitorial, and you're more than welcome to put the name of your company in here if you choose so, but let's say it's Jones Janitorial, you can easily create a DBA and change it into the Jones Firm, um, Jones Federal. You can create all kinds of DBAs. You could turn it into an acronym. That's what's awesome about this space. Um, if you don't have a business and you need to create a name, I suggest you create something with initials, um, something that's really easy, something that's not controversial, something that can scale. That's what I highly suggest that you do. Um, better destination media. Okay. You could, your DBA could be um, BDM. It could be um, Better Federal. I think that's kind of cool. That rolls off the tongue. Um, better Contracting or something like that. Most states, they make it super easy to create a DBA. I did that for my flagship company because um, there was a time people would say like, oh, Kizzy Parks Consulting. It's not Kizzy Parks Consulting. It's K period Parks. And it just became so aggravating because I was like, that's not the name. And so I changed it to KPC because I knew IBM and others had like a three letter um, acronym. That's just the approach I took. I'm just checking out the other questions, y'all. Are there contracts for notary signing agents? Um, just one second. Healing Sun House LLC. You can make it HSH. I mean, it's kind of hard to say, but, or HS. You know, anything. It, it, what's important is you don't have to get a new business, get a new cage code, get a new EIN. It's just you created doing business as. I think there's even websites you can go to to generate one for free. I think you can do that too. So um, yeah, doing business as a DBA. CF services, yeah, I like that one. That sounds cool. So I'll answer the notary and then I'll go back to my story about Kimberly Kidd and HVAC for those of you who want a prime contract. Are there services for notaries? Yeah. Is it something to create a sustainable business model off of in federal government contracting? No, <laughs> I don't think so. And here's why I say I don't think so. I use the proven roadmap. So when I say proven roadmap, this doesn't just apply to federal government contracting. This applies to my finances. This applies to sales. This applies to relationships. It applies to spirituality. It applies to many areas in my life. And when it comes to government contracting, I know IBM, I know Lockheed Martin, I know of Raytheon, I know of these really well-known publicly traded organizations. So I ask myself, are they offering notary services? Now, does it mean I'm only offering what these companies are offering? No, that's not what I'm getting at. It's about what are the things that they have done to make money that shows me money can be made. For example, Laundromats. Everybody needs to wash their clothes. There's always going to be a need for laundromats. I believe the return on investment for laundromats are like 30%. I don't need to reinvent the laundromat thing. I may make some tweaks or add some really cool things in the vending machine. At the end of the day, laundromats. So when it comes to government contracting, staffing. A lot of these companies, they offer a ton of staffing and that's where they make their money. So what do I do? Staffing. So when it comes to notary, there's different opportunities that are out there. It's going to be what I call a one and done. Oh, I took care of that. Then where's the revenue? So that's my response. Um, okay. 
having trouble choosing what NAICS code to use to land more contracts. To land more contracts has nothing to do with your NAICS code at all. It has to do with off with selling low risk, understanding the bid, and having a high win rate. That's all it's about, especially on how to land your first government contract. And also for um, Jay, please don't be offended by my answer. So please don't think I'm being flippant. It's I'm all about business, business model. I'm not going to give any of you fluff and say, yes, go and do this. And then you do it. And then what's going to happen? You're going to be pissed off and be like, I can't believe because he didn't tell me the truth. That's not how I am, y'all. It's not how I am. And I've been in this space for 15 years. Okay, good. Audrey's on it. Relationships. Um, okay, cool, cool, cool. Thank you. I'll get to everyone's um, comment too. And also, we're at like the 16-minute mark. I'm gonna go until I can go, just because I I'm um, a little I'm a little tired, y'all. I mean, my hair is cute, but I feel like I yeah, I'm tired. So, um, and I appreciate each and every one of y'all being here. Please subscribe, please like, please share. I adore each and every one of you. Okay. So going back to Kimberly Kidd, she started out in IT. She started her business. Within two years, she's over a million dollars in revenue. Why? Because she went after what I call low risk areas. Her very first contract was around half a million for HVAC. You know why it's low risk? We all have it. Heating and cooling. It's something you know. It's something I know. If it goes out, we go online or we look at our HVAC system. And if the company who installed it, they were savvy, they would have put a sticker with their phone number on there. So then you knew, hey, Tony and co installed this, let me call them. The same applies. When it comes to areas like HVAC, snow removal, even notary, um, gym, remo uh, gym floor repair, things that are low risk are easier to win because often they will base everything on price. So let that soak in. It's a way for you to get into the door and then to grow. That is what the low risk opportunities do for you. Sometimes it could be training. Maybe they're just looking for someone to provide a leadership course. That's low risk. You can't really mess too much up, right? Um, these are the areas to hone in on. Let's see, was her business HVAC? It was not HVAC. Her background was IT. She definitely subcontracted that out. Thank you so much. My hair is cute. Uh, yeah, you got to get in the door. She definitely was smart. How long does it take you to get your cage coat? It can take a few weeks. If you are still waiting, call them. Call them. They're really nice. Definitely call. Call, call, call. Who is the first person you should call to get started to get ball rolling? Um, TNT, I'm not, I may need a little more context. When you say to get the ball rolling, are you referring to, to get your cage code or to land your first contract? If it's to land your first federal government contract, contact your friends and family who are in the government space. That's the first um, type of call I would make. If it's at the state level, then Call your state equivalent to their supplier office or their purchasing department just to find out how you can go about selling what it is you're looking to sell to them. Because states work way different. There's a lot of overlap, a lot of similarities, but there's definitely differences. <laughs> definitely you could call me. I mean, definitely you can reach out. You know, I have a ton of content. I'm always here. I'm super helpful. I also have paid programs too. So definitely you can reach out. Um, I love the acronym LRA. I think that's great. I'll put a link in here later to my coaching. Um, right now, it's definitely at a discount. 
It's twenty nine ninety seven. We 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 meet live weekly. All of that will be changing in the next few weeks. Um, it'll drastically change just because of um, what I'm putting together. So that's what I have. Um, yeah, please hit the like button. I love that, Jay Taylor. Please, please do. And thank you, BJ. You know, again, a reason I'm looking down, I'm just looking at my phone. Don't think I'm like playing some game over here or like on Tinder or something or Bumble or Black People Meet. So um, landing your first contract as a prime, you must be in SAM and have a cage code. It's easiest if you go after something that's low risk. It could even be hauling something. It could be moving something. I mean, it could be um, selling a product. I saw something for Hawaii where they want certain batteries. That's low risk. Now, I must add something because there's a lot of noise out here. Like, oh, you can do the middleman and you can get into government, get all this money and do all these things. Often, there is a bit of an upfront expense. If you're reselling batteries, how are you going to get the batteries to Hawaii? If you're going through the government printing website and maybe you're having pens and pencils, I'm not sure, I don't know how my, my Zoom works on here. You totally can't see that. Kind of. I have the setting set so it focuses on my face. So that's probably why it's like, we're not going to read that writing. But I promise you, there's writing on here. And through the government printing office, you can sell, hey, I can print a thousand pens, um, words on a thousand pens for you. But there's still an upfront cost with that. Okay. Um, no, 90% discount. No, Jay. Okay, biz credit and export. Uh, they're they're not really buying like business credit. I mean, you can export things. Business credit is important. Maybe that's what you're getting at, Audrey. Business credit is definitely important because some vendors will extend credit to you, or you have to ask them, as well as the other tip. Because here's the deal, and this happens all of the time. You win the contract. You win it. It's, I mean, believe me, it's it's not as hard as it seems to win, but you win it. But if you're not set up to execute it, then you end up like a, a particular woman who reached out and won a contract. And when I broke down what she won, she said, I don't want it. I want to send it back. Look, I get it. It's kind of our first response. Like, oh, I don't want that. Like, take it back. Take it back. Like, I get it. But this is business. There's no like take it back. So having a relationship with a small bank, like a bank no one has ever heard of, not Chase, not PNC, not Bank of America, y'all, with like a really small bank or credit union is really helpful because often they're going to be able to provide to you a line of credit or a credit card so then you can put the money up front. Okay. Thank you so much, Audrey. That's really, really key. So the low risk areas are important, meaning you want to focus on things where it's lowest cost, technically acceptable to get a foot in the door. The other way to land your first government contract is to go to acquisition.gov, acquisition.gov. And there you go to the bottom and you click a button that says forecast and you can take a look at all of the different opportunities that various agencies want to buy. So for example, if you are a service disabled vet, go to the VA's website that focuses on business and there's a whole area for forecast. 
and it lists probably thousands of things that they're looking to buy. And legally, the VA must purchase from a service disabled veteran owned firm first. So what this does, it narrows the competition, it focuses you in, and you still have thousands of things to choose from. And there's definitely something there you could win in a few months. I'm just taking a look, see if there's any more questions. Um, I'm probably, I'm going to probably end here in a second. Um, it, it, and if you have any questions, let me know if you, if you are like, man, this is great. You know, just let me know. Like, I, I can't even think of a word to put today. <laughs> just put like, this is, this is amazing. Put like amazing. Like this is amazing. Um, the other thing is how to win your first contract is to leverage your set aside. So even if you are not certified as a woman owned small business or economically disadvantaged woman small business owned small business does not mean that you cannot respond to those set asides. You still can. Uh, I do do payment plans. I do. Oh, thank you so much SWK. I do. So leveraging those further narrows the competition. Because in this government space, it's about narrowing the competition, narrowing the competition. No different than Amazon. You all may remember, and they still kind of do this. Like, let's say you're looking for something on Amazon and it'll say like Amazon brand or Amazon preferred. And it kind of highlights it because Amazon's going to make a larger margin on that. So they want to get rid of all the competition. It doesn't matter if there's five other companies that sell the same item, they're getting rid of the competition by highlighting it, showcasing it because they're the company behind it. So that's their way to get rid of the competition or take, I think it was called diapers.com. When that company was out, they really were a thorn in Amazon's side because they were directly competing with them for the mom market. So Amazon bought them and closed them down. Let's see. For a newbie, would you recommend starting with state? I say you do all of it. I'm I'm an all of it kind of person. You know, often people will say like, oh, let me just start something small. Let me do something small. It's not about starting small. We're amazing. We're GovCon winners. You want to start big. There's nothing wrong with starting big. It's about you being comfortable. So for instance, someone who I mentored, um, I helped him bid on something that was almost $2 million. And he had been in the space like three months. It doesn't matter if it's $10,000, $2,000, or $2 million, the same fundamentals apply. The same apply. Um, what is the difference between UEI and the CAGE code? The UEI is a unique identifier. A CAGE code is, is um, issued by a different department, and that is the one that you need in order to do work with the federal government. It, they're just unique ways to identify you as a business. So you have to apply through SAM.gov to get them. Do I have to personally do it? No. Thank you, John, for saying it's amazing. You don't. You don't have to personally do any of this work. There are times in some solicitations or bids where they may have language about subcontracting or vendors. Take note of that, understood. Um, no different than they have Buy American Acts as far as when they're purchasing HVACs and other things, a certain percentage must be made in America or materials that were sourced in America. So there's little nuances, but just don't let it take you away from the prize. The prize is your why. That's the prize. And only you know what that is. So kind of to round everything out. Um, yes, I will do that. Oh, thank you. Oh, I don't. Oh, retract it. Okay. Um, this is a space where you can easily get in and win your first contract. You can definitely do that. It's focusing on the low risk areas as a prime with a cage code and an active SAM registration. For those of you where you're like, I don't want any of that, 
It's taking the subcontract route, penetrating your network, going on LinkedIn, connecting with business owners like myself or others who you believe may need what you offer. There's a couple more things, and then I'm going to kind of um, end it here. I told my business partner about your content programs. We will do it soon. I believe your knowledge can help us get to the next level. Yeah, I mean, it definitely can because with service disabled, and this is for anyone who's service disabled, veteran owned small business. Um, I'm just pulling up my link for all of you. And that is you definitely want to penetrate the VA. That's what you want to do. You want to penetrate the VA like they owe you money. I mean, think about how we are when somebody owes us $10. Like recently, this handy man I hired, bless his heart, he owed me $100 because of an error he made. I was like, where's my $100? Where's my $100? <laughs> I was like, I want a $100 bill. I don't want Venmo. I mean, and it's like we, or, you know, sometimes you put so much emphasis on like getting money back, but yet when it comes to, doing research for business. It's like, oh, I'll, you know, it's, it's scary, right? We're like, oh, I don't know about that. I don't, I don't, can I really do that? And the same kind of mentality applies as you take that, like you owe me money. I'm going to get this, that same kind of, uh, and you put that um, toward finding opportunities. So definitely for service disabled, you want to contact the VA so much that they think you're calling to make medical appointments. In reality, you're not. So I just um, provided the link. Uh, is it true the best time to bid for contracts is in the first quarter? So the, it, it doesn't, I wouldn't say there's like a best time, Jay. It really depends. I mean, it really depends on what you're buying. What do you think about consultant? Um, I'm not really, you may have to elaborate. I'm not really sure what you mean by that. What, um, all of that, we need it, yes. How do I sign up to be service disabled? It's not clear. Um, okay, so the service disabled set aside um, application is suspended until January. So right now they have kind of like a one year grace um, situation. You can check out SBA for more information on that. Also, I wanna say this is, okay, awesome. That regardless of the set aside, it, it's you and what your business provides that's gonna get you the work. It's also you understanding what you're bidding on and you leveraging networks and thinking outside of the box. You put all of those together, you're going to grow and blossom when it comes to your space. It's what's going to happen. It's going to. Um, there are tons of organizations that have set asides, even eight days, and they never get any work. It happens. So with that, you all, there's no reason you can't do it. Cage code, go after low risk. If you don't have a cage code and you're interested in subbing, take that other route. For service contracts, there's another question. Do you tell your sub that they will be paid not 30 days or you do you pay in advance? So when I first started out, I didn't have a lot of money. And then eventually I put myself into $600,000 in debt of bad decisions. Um, so when I first started out, I not only said to people, but I typed it in an agreement. That's really important is you want to have agreements. Super, super important. So in the um, independent contractor service agreement, it stated like they would be paid when we were paid. So sometimes it may have been 60 days. Now we tend to pay people ahead of time um, is what we often do just because we're able to do that. And it doesn't have to be net 30. It's up to you. You're the business owner. We do work for IBM. They they have a net 90. So why is it that IBM can have a net 90? I can have a net 90. Why can't I? Why? 
You know, when you're the business owner, you're the one that drives the car. You're the one that's steering the boat. You're the one in charge. You set the rules. And if somebody doesn't want to do it, move on to somebody who will. So this is a beautiful space, everyone. A beautiful, beautiful space. And there's a plethora of opportunities. There's thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of opportunities. Following these suggestions, having a strategy will lead to an abundance. Okay, so I love and adore each and every one of you. Hit the notification, hit the subscribe, share, like, all of that. I provided the link. I'll provide it one more time. If you're interested in this, this has the payment options there. So with that, all my amazing GovCon winners, do not forget every single thing is possible. Until next time, take care, y'all. I'm heading off, I'm heading off, heading off.